Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, uh, great dear friends and lovers of freedom. This is Radio Biafra London. My name remains Manzi Jonathan Chinedu from the province of Biafra London. We are here live and direct. Today is the 30th day of May 2023. Tata Bobo Chiafo. Therefore, I will hand over the microphone, the platform, to the head of the Directorate of States, Maze Chika Edosium, in order to address peer friends. Maze, over to you, sir. Good morning, Maze Kennedy. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night, fellow Biafrans, wherever you may be at this very hour. Great and indefatigable IPOB family members worldwide. Lovers of freedom, men and women of goodwill. We are once again on this 30th day of May, observing a solemn day of remembrance of our heroes and heroines. We observe this yearly ritual so that we do not forget those brave men and women who refuse to be subjugated and enslaved in their own land but rather chose the part of honor and selflessly paid the ultimate price of death for us, their children, children's children, and for generations yet unborn. The Directorate of State of the Indigenous People of Biafra expressed our profound gratitude to the most high Chukuka Biyama for his unfailing faithfulness and guidance as we on this solemn day of May 30, 2023 remember and honor and celebrate our brave heroes and heroines men, women, children who sacrificed their lives for our freedom. It is to Chukukikabiam that we ascribe all glory for impressing upon the hearts and minds of Biafrans, friends of Biafrans and lovers of freedom, the spirit of obedience to the directive by Onyendumazinam the Kano, the leader, of the indigenous people of Biafra, who, who initiated this very special day of remembrance in acknowledgement, in recognition, and in appreciation of the great sacrifices made by our gallant heroes and heroines, and all of the victims of the Biafran genocide beginning from 1945 to the present, 2023. In countries and cities and capitals around the world, Biafrans will come out in their numbers to pay a solemn respect, to remember, to honor, to acknowledge those selfless sacrifices that was made that our race may not be extinguished, that our race may not be as the enemy had wished, totally destroyed. Today we remember our brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers and children massacred in our Sabbath by the Nigerian armed forces, civilians who were mowed down with machine guns and buried in mass graves. We remember the victims of the Enugu coal mine massacre 
our brothers, our fathers, our people who were in cold blood, murdered by the British colonial criminals. Those who were killed simply because they were asking for a better condition of working environment in their own land for the extraction of the resources that is in their own father's ancestral land. And the British, without any, any thought, they murder these breadwinners, they kill them because for them, it is the resources in our land that is very important to them, but not we, the owners of the land. We remember the victims of the Aba High School massacre. Men and women who gathered in 2016 to pray for the release of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. As at that time, who was at that period, in 2015 as well, incarcerated by the zoo. And our men, our brothers, and our mothers and sisters gathered to pray to Chupu Abiyama to ask the ancestors to intervene. And the Nigerian military, the Nigerian police, a combination of murderers, attacked and murdered uncountable number of youths on that very day. These people were caught down in their prime thereby extinguishing their dreams and aspirations. We remember the victims of Emene, Igocha, Obi Ibo, Onecha, Olo, Odi, and more massacres. All these places where our people were summarily executed by the Nigerian terrorist military and forces and armed forces we remember these gallant men and women we remember our men and our women and youths massacred and decapitated in their farms by the full and terrorists masquerading as headsmen we remember our youths who were massacred by the Boko Haram terrorists recruited into the Nigerian armed security forces and sent down to Biafra land to annihilate us in our towns and cities and villages while the Fulani terror headsmen are in our forests and bushes targeting our means of livelihood and those who are there to go to the farm to cultivate their farmlands. Today, we remember the victims of the Atlantic and Sahara Desert slave trade. Those that died in slave chains. Those that died under the brutality and inhuman treatment of the British and American slave owners. We remember them that they were taken forcibly from their own land and transported into a new and strange land where they were treated worse than animals. Today, we remember the brave and gallant men and women of Eastern Security Network. We remember them that died while ensuring that the forests and farmlands of Biafra are safe for our people to engage in their farming activities. We remember all these and many more that we cannot name their names at this very hour and today but they are all in our hearts. They are all in our thoughts. They are in our minds and our prayers to Chukwokike is to ensure that the sacrifices which they have paid must and shall never be in vain. As we remember these victims today, we also honor and acknowledge those who did not simply stood by and watched at the extermination of their people. We honor, therefore, the Ekumeku warriors who fought decades long war against the British imperialists. 
We honor the women behind the Abba Women Riots, who also raised, rose against the British criminal taskmasters. We honor all those who fought alongside our eternal leader, General Chuku Emeka Odemegu Juku, to preserve our race and preserve our values. We honor the operatives of the Eastern Security Network. We honor this very day as well, Mazi Nandekano, our living hero the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, who is leading this present battle from the very front lines. We must therefore continue to put him in our prayer and supplications to Chukwa Biyama and, of course, to our ancestors who called him for this very enormous work that they may grant him victory over every enemy of our freedom and every enemy of Gaffer. These, these men and women and many more like them, these very heroes who confronted the evil that confronted us at their time are the symbols of our resistance to the British and Nigerian government orchestrated genocide and war of extermination against the Bafran people. We must never for a moment lose sight of our history. We must never allow any man or woman cajole us into abandoning our struggle for freedom or forgetting those who have played some role in the past and present subjugation of our people. Because this generation of the indigenous people of Biafra led by Oyenu Mazinam the Kano has a divine duty to repair the broken walls so that the dignity, the honor, and privilege of our people are restored. We must not forget we must never forget that on the 22nd of June, 1945, the massacre of Biafrans commenced in Jers, resulting in the murder of thousands of Biafrans by the House of Flani, while hundreds of thousands of pounds telling wolf at that time of Biafran properties, of Biafran people's properties were either looted or destroyed. We must not forget that this happened while the British were in charge. Nobody, nobody was ever held accountable. None was arrested. None was prosecuted by the British colonial government. As a matter of fact, the British refused to institute an inquiry into the bestial and gruesome murder of a section of the populace and wanton destruction of their properties and means of livelihood when they were in charge because the killing of their friends served their evil interest to either completely annihilate us or reduce us to a race of slaves. Dear friends, fast forward to Kanu 1953. I am deliberately enumerating history for our people never to forget. Fast forward to Kanu 1953. Thousands more dear friends, their families and properties were again targets of ethnic cleansing under the supervision of the British overlords. From 1954 to October 1966, more than 30,000 Biafrans were killed in Northern Nigeria. And between October 1966 and June 1967, 
more than 300,000 were massacred. 300,000 of our people were sent to their early graves in a most brutish, gruesome manner. Pregnant women were killed. Their unborn babies pulled out of their wombs received a most gruesome and barbaric end. While other victims had their eyes gorged, arms and limbs amputated, heads popped off. And these were sent down to Biafra land, all packed in a train for our people to behold what has become of their brothers and sisters, their fathers and mothers. It is an emotional day for us today. It was a most graphic, barbaric, and animalistic tendency ever exhibited in Africa. These were ferocious, horrifying crimes against humanity in an indescribable scale. Up till today, nobody has ever been held accountable for all these murders. Bear in mind that all these killings were done in peacetime. There was not a war at that time. They were all in the so-called one Nigeria. Without any provocation from the victims. And with the unassailable evidence of complicity and involvement on the part of local and national authority at the time whether it is the colonial British government or the Nigerian puppet government, they were all together in the conspiracy to annihilate a race that did them nothing. From July 6th, 1967 to January 15th, 1970, a large scale program of total extermination of indigenous people of Biafra found harmed. the final solution to the Biafran problem was initiated. When they tell you there was a, a, a Biafran Nigerian war, don't listen to them. It was a premeditated, a preordained Planned program for the total extermination of Biafrans from our ancestral lands. At the end of all this, more than 5 million Biafrans, representing close to 25% of the total population of the Biafran people, were exterminated in a mutu inhuman and ghastly manner by the Nigeria fully backed, supported, militarily equipped by the British. And during this period, from among these 5 million Biafrans, more than 3 million of them were civilian women and children. Women and children who died from starvation because of the British government's supervised air, land, and sea blockade of the Biafran territory. Territorial waters and land, they blockaded us. They wanted to starve all of us to death. We must never forget. We must never forget those behind the clean of our people and those who are still at the hem of the current murder of our people. The killings have continued unabated from 1970 to the present, resulting in the death of millions more of the indigenous people of Biafra. Biafrans and lovers of freedom these victims of the programs in northern Nigeria 
victims of the British genocide, and those murdered in cold blood for exercising their inalienable right to self-determination by the trigger happy Nigerian secret forces. These are the heroes and heroines that we are remembering today. They are the people that we are celebrating and honoring today. They are the people because of whom many of us are alive this very day. They paid the ultimate price for our collective dignity and freedom. And it is therefore in their honor that we observe today and shall observe till the end of time, 30th May of each year, as a day, a solemn day to remember, acknowledge, honor, and appreciate the sacrifices that they made for and on our behalf. I have deliberately and consciously reminded all of you listening to me this morning about the history of the crimes committed against us as a people so that we do not forget. And also, for you to understand, to put it at the, at the, at the, at the front line of your thought that those who participated in those crimes, those who were part of that conspiracy, you must presently just oppose the history that I have related this morning with the present situation that we have found ourselves in, so that you may see without a doubt that the agenda has neither changed nor the actors and the perpetrators the agenda to eliminate us, the agenda to cleanse us from our ancestral land, the agenda to emasculate us in every manner, the agenda remains the same, and the actors and perpetrators are still the same. The British are the hem of it, and they are using the zoo for this very purpose. This is why Mazen Nam the Kano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, whose only crime is his call for a referendum. A referendum that will afford the Biafran people the opportunity to decide their own fate as a people. Considering the historical facts in the military above, and who incidentally also holds a British passport. This man has been under solitary confinement, torture, physically and psychologically, with the objective to eliminate him while still in detention. Why am I pointing this out? I am pointing it out for us to understand that it does not matter. Our leader has, you may call it a dual citizenship of Biafra and the British. But you may see the British, they have deliberately, deliberately kept silence and low profile as it concerns the case of Mazin Amdekar because for them, the fight for Mazin Amdekar will not be to their own benefit and interest. Therefore, they want to abandon him, and they have, as they have abandoned him, they want to allow the Nigerian government to continue to humiliate, torture, and treat him with all manner of indignity. This is notwithstanding the positions of international organizations. Recall great Biafrans and lovers of freedom 
Recall that the United Nations Human Rights Council's Working Group on Arbitrary Det Detention had on July 20th, 2022, called on the Nigerian government to release Mazen Nam the Kano unconditionally and additionally adequately compensating. And that decision or opinion of the Working Group on Arbitrary, UN's Working Group on Arbitrary Detention, the international body opine among others, and I crave your indulgence. I will read one or two paragraphs or three from, from, their, from their submission. The body opined as follows, that the working group finds that Mazin Nam the Kanu's continued deprivation of liberty violates his rights under Articles 3 and 9 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Article 9 of the Covenant and Principles 2, 4, and 10 of the Body of Principles and the Constitutes Arbitrary Detention under Category 1 and 2 and a breach of Article 14C of the Covenant. I may not be reading individually these articles, what they contain, but I read for that. The working group finds that the fair trial rights and procedural guarantees of Martin Nam de Kano under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Covenant and other relevant human rights standards were not observed and that such violations are of such gravity as to render Martin Nam de Kano's detention arbitrary under Category 3. And the working group considers, therefore, that his de detention violates Article 2 and 7 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and Articles 2, 1 and 26 of the Covenant and, therefore, is arbitrary under Category 5. What, what the working group is saying so far is that all the processes, all the processes that involve the extra judicial or extraordinary rendition of Martin Namdekano from Kenya to the zoo, Nigeria, have been issued and null and void. They are null and void because they were done in, in direct and conscious violations of rules of international covenants and the rules that guides and, of course, um, regulates the human rights in, our, in the world society, in the global stage. The working group notes, therefore, that Mazin Nam the Khan had been denied medical treatment and medication for his heart condition. The group recalls that prolonged solitary confinement in excess of 15 consecutive days is prohibited under Rules 43, 1 and B, Rules 44 of the Mandela Rules. Further, it notes that denial of medical assistance constitutes a violation of the Nelson Mandela Rules, which is Rules 24, 25, 27, and 30 in particular. In conclusion, therefore, the working group observed in the case of Kenya and Nigeria that 
the deprivation of liberty of mass in Namdi Kanu being in contravention of articles 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and Articles 2, 9, 13, 14, 16, 19, and 26 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights is arbitrary and falls within categories 1, 2, 3, and 4. The working group considers that taking into account all the circumstances of the case. The appropriate remedy will be for the government of Nigeria to release Mazin Namdekano immediately unconditionally. And for both governments, talking about the Kenyan government and the Nigerian government, for both governments to accord him an enforceable right to compensation and other reparations in accordance with international law. Our leader is illegally under detention. Our leader is going through torture physically, psychologically, and mentally, illegally under the watch of a country that parades or countries, not a country this time, Countries that parade themselves as defenders of human rights. You ask yourself, the human rights of their friends, is it different from the human rights of all other people that inhabit this globe? Almost 12 months since the UN Working Group, 12 months, one year since they gave the group, uh, the working group gave its opinion. The Nigerian government has continued to illegally hold Mazen Namdekano under very dehumanizing environment, hoping that his long incarceration and the accompanying torture will eventually achieve their initial plan to assassinate him when they invaded his compound, his father's compound, with a battalion of soldiers in 2017 and the british are there they claim that they are defenders of human rights they do not defend any human right that will not be to their to their to their shameful interest from 2015 to 2022 this before even this very UN working group came out with the opinion, a number of judicial pronouncements, orders, and judgments from different courts of competent jurisdiction, the judging and acquitting the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra of all crimes leveled against him by the Nigerian government have been made. But his fundamental human rights have continued to be violated violently and brutally. And the world are telling us that um, we must keep quiet. We must not say anything. We must not do anything. We must just watch. The Biafran people are not oblivious. We are not oblivious of the existence of a policy of the Nigerian establishment tailored towards achieving both the political, cultural, and economic emasculation and annihilation of the Biafran people, as well as their plan to ethnically cleanse Biafran from our ancestral homeland in order for them to take over the resources that Chukwokika Biafran blessed the land of Biafran with. This is why Many of them, many, some of the um, foreign missions in Nigeria, they are deep involved in blood oil money from Biafra land.
They are deep involved in criminal activities of oil bunkering. And these are done at the expense of our land, of our people. As a result of, of this conspiracy, the indigenous people of Biafra, we have suffered untold hardship. We have suffered threat to our culture and tradition and assault on our value system and a near complete desolate, desolation and waste of our environment. Go to the very variant areas and you will see for yourself. Ogoni is an example. It is still there. Our land has been rendered unproductive. Those who fish as um, whose fishing is their occupation. Those who farm as an occupation. They have no lands to farm and the rivers can no longer produce the fishes for them to fish from. It was this aspiration, these devilish desire to ethnically remove Biafran from our homeland, a place wherein we have inhabited and developed the first civilization known to man that culminated in a war of annihilation imposed upon the Biafran people by the Nigerian government in collaboration with the British government and order of the allies. Biafrans, great and very committed and loyal IPOB family members worldwide. Although we are yet to have that freedom for which all the heroes and heroines we are remembering today died for. Remembering and honoring their sacrifice constantly reminds us of the obligation we owe them and of our duty not to relent until total freedom and liberty for which they died are achieved. As has been our usage, Biafrans and the whole of Biafra land are observing today a complete lockdown of Biafra land, a seat at home in honor of our fallen heroes and our heroines. And in the honor of all the victims of the terror of the Fuladi headsmen and of the Boko Haram who are in the Nigerian armed forces. In more than 120 countries around the world, Biafrans will, all those, some of them already gathered, and they will rally in public places, in the capitals and cities of these countries to bring to the notice of the inhabitants of these areas the condition and situation of the people called the indigenous people of Biafra. The silence of the international community on the Biafran genocide, especially those Western nations whom we have believed and hoped that the suffering of our people, the constant spilling of the blood of our people in the streets of Biafra and of Nigeria, the constant violation of the rights of the indigenous people of Biafra by the Nigerian government, past and present, through the instrumentality of these security apparatus. We have hoped that these will move the international community to action, to speak up, to ask questions, and to come to the rescue of the Dan Trodden and the people of Biafra who are being killed on a daily basis. But no, our sufferings, if 
nothing to them. They have rather shown a deliberate acquiescence to these crimes against humanity that is that has been that had been and and continue to be meted against the indigenous people of Biafra. The Nigerian government, emboldened by the lack of will and lack of interest on the part of the international community to be alive to its responsibility, rightly assumed, therefore, they assume, therefore, that they are at liberty to continue with the annihilation of the bathroom people. They are at liberty to continue with the murder, the daylight murder of youths, women and women and children on the streets of Belfort land. They have assumed that they are at liberty to create a war situation in our land, dotting every nook and cranny with army or police checkpoints in fact turning the whole of our land into a one big prison yard. Yes, our land has been turned into a war zone, but without the official declaration of war, as the military and police checkpoints, they dot the nooks and crannies of Biafra land, our villages and our towns. The indigenous people of Biafra believe that humanity can do better than they have done on the issue of Biafra. This was why we wrote to. This was why we demonstrated peaceably across cities and capitals of the world. This was why we pleaded the wit. This was why we cried to those who claim to be worldly defenders of democracy and human rights. We went to United Nations, not one, not twice, not thrice, not four times. We went to the European Union. We communicated leaders of the world and brought the condition of our people to their notice. We let them understand that they have to intervene. But it is now very clear to us, very, very clear to the Biafran people, that defending the human rights of Biafrans will not serve the agenda of these imperialists. After having heard our cries, after having seen the atrocities being committed, their silence has become louder than it can be imagined. We, therefore, the Biafran people, we will today, 30th of May 2023, we will plead no more. We will cry no more. Our destiny as Biafrans is now in our own hands. And we took Okikabiyama directing our hands and guiding our feet on the path to total freedom and total liberation, we shall be victorious. We shall plead no more. And of course, in our refusal to plead anymore, we will change our strategy. But that is not for today. For today is a day to pay homage, to pay respect, to remember and honor them that have come before us and have made an enormous contribution for our well-being and for our freedom. It is in accordance with its responsibility and pursuance of its stated aims and objective, which of course we know there is only one objective of the indigenous people of Biafra led by Wendy Mazin and Kano. It is the emancipation of our people, the freedom of our land, and the restoration 
of the broken walls and valleys that had made our land what it was in days and years and decades and centuries come back. In the exercise of its universally recognized and guaranteed right to self-determination, it is our right. The Directorate of State of the Indigenous People of Biafra request and urge every genuine and hardcore IPOB family members worldwide to tighten their belts for the final push across the finishing line of our fight for, for liberation. It is at this time that we must be at a lot. We must learn something from the liberation movement of the early 20th century. We must be aware that the modus operandi of the imperialists and new imperialists is to create enemies within every genuine liberation movement and attempt to destroy the liberation movement from within. They will create saboteurs whose singular job is to distract and derail every genuine liberation movement such as IPUB. We must therefore be on the lookout for these agents of the West working solely for their selfish interests and that or their paper stamps. When we identify these moles in our midst, we must be very firm and weed them out of our movement. There shall be no pattern. Be friends. It may interest you. It may interest you and those of you who are listening to know that for the past two years since our leader was devilishly, extraordinarily renditioned, the Nigerian government has spent in excess of 650 million US dollars. I'll repeat it. For the past two years, since the extraordinary rendition of our leader and the continued incarceration of Onyendu in the underground dungeon of the DSS, the Nigerian government has spent in excess of 650 million US dollars. For what, you may ask? To develop uh, to build infrastructure? Not at all. This amount, which is a conservative estimate, was budgeted just to destroy the IPOB and its leadership, so as to perpetually subjugate our race to eternal slavery. This is why we have seen from 2012 to the present not less than five, one, two, three, four, five agents in the form of Biafra government in exile, which are set up by Western intelligence agencies, such as the MI6 and the CIA, to play the role that people and saboteurs and agents played during the early time of the liberation movement. We can still remember people like Patrick Lumumba. We, we, we see the gory, the gory and graphic way that a man who came out to liberate his people was murdered by these intelligence agencies of the Western world. We know what happened to Thomas Sankara and many of them. That is why they have concentrated in USA. This is where the problem of IPOB is emanating from. This is why they have concentrated in U UK, United Kingdom. These are the two nations 
that are at the helm of affairs of trying to derail through the creation of these agent provocateurs our march to freedom. But they are late. They came late because the train has left the station already. IPOB will no longer ignore any clear and verifiable act of sabotage from politicians of Biafran origin because they are part. They are part of this conspiracy. They are the ones, the politicians in Biafra land, the ones on the ground. You know, they will come and speak from both sides of the mouth. They will tell you what thing they have to do. They will seek relevance with the name of Mazen Nam the Canon, the leader of this great movement, during the day and in the night, join nocturnal meetings with our enemies for the purpose of sabotaging our march to freedom and for the purpose of continuing to sabotage the release of Onyen Dumas and Amdekan. Biafrans, despite the genocide committed against us in the past, Notwithstanding the past and current economic emasculation policies of the Nigerian state, through the seizure and destruction of our properties and means of livelihood, and in spite of state orchestrated acts of terror and violence, constant and continued disappearances and extrajudicial murders of the Biafran people. This generation of Biafrans have remained focused. This generation of indigenous people of Biafra, we have remained unwavering in the quest for our ultimate objective, as did our heroes and the heroines, whom we are remembering and honoring today. We have done this by exhibiting an uncanny determination to sacrifice limb and pleasure for the joy of living a free people in our ancestral homeland. Our burning desire to be free, that love for end of liberty that is so intrinsic to our nature it's what propels us, and it is that that confuses the enemy. Despite all their crimes against us, we are marching forward to the ultimate objective. This attribute of the Biafran people, this explains this hunger for freedom, this thirst for us to be in charge of our own affairs. It explains the agitation to exercise our fundamental right to self-determination. People must understand that. It is not, as our leader has always said, we do not hate anybody. We do not hate nobody in the zoo, no nation. But the inner desire to be a free people the innate desire for us to use the, the, the talents endowed upon our people by heaven, by Chukwabiyam, for the benefit of our people. This is what propels our agitation for a separate nation, a free, independent, and sovereign Biafra nation, and we are pursuing this in accordance, in accordance with the principles of self-determination recognized and guaranteed under the United Nations and the African Union systems. Finally, great Biafra. Finally, 
I urge the indigenous people of Biafra worldwide to remain resolute in their fight for liberation and pursuit of freedom because there is no alternative. I urge you to remain focused because this fight must come to an end in the shortest possible time. It is not and will not be a fight that we will leave for our children. No. This leadership of IPOB, this very indigenous people of Biafra, led by Mazen Namdekano, we have a date with history and we will bring this fight to conclusion to the glory of Chukwa Biyama and to the joy of our people. It is in this respect, therefore, that I urge all of you to maintain the discipline for which the world has now come to associate IPOB with. Maintain your discipline amongst the family members. I urge you today to remain firm in your conviction because our cause is a just cause. The, the, the cause of the Biafran people is a just cause. Be rest assured that opinion of the UN can, can simply let you understand that we are pursuing what is right. We are pursuing what is proper. We are pursuing what we are asking for what belongs to us. I urge you also to reject every form of irritation and distraction from agent provocateurs and focus on our objective, which is the restoration of the sovereign and independent nation of Biafra. At that alone, the restoration, the declaration of a free independent and sovereign Biafra nation is the only way the souls of millions of our dead heroes and heroines will have rest and the only way through which we may accord them the honor that is due to them. Oyendu says, it is to the dead, those who have come and gone, those who have made their sacrifices. It is to them that we owe our loyalty. It is to this end that I reaffirm, therefore, on behalf of the Directorate of State of the Indigenous People of Biafra. I therefore reaffirm today on behalf of the indigenous people of Biafra that our inalienable right to determine our cultural, our economic, and our political systems, as well as our right to self-determination as indigenous people which right is proclaimed which right is guaranteed by the united nations declaration on the rights of the indigenous people of biafra to self-determination and articles 5 6 7 and 12 of the african charter on human and people's rights which documents have all been ratified and domesticated by the Nigerian government since 1983. Wonderful and great people of Biafra, hardcore IPOB family members worldwide, men and women of goodwill, lovers of freedom. We 
commend all your efforts today as we remember these our heroes and we ask you to go and walk along with us as we head to the finishing line of this very very struggle for our freedom and for our liberation we must continue to put our leader in prayer we must continue to supplicate to heaven to keep him well and of course release him to us bring him out to us soonest so that together with him at the helm of this very movement we can continue to march to our free and sovereign Biafran nation. Long live Biafra. Long live the indigenous people of Biafra. Thank you for listening to me. And may Chukwabiyama bless all of you and keep all of you and guide all of you that as you have gathered today from wherever you may have left your homes to gather in cities around the world today, that he will also lead you back home safely to your homes and, of course, to your families. One more thing, please. Those in Biafra land, I made a mention last time for people to get a cola note, our local cola note, and use it as a contact uh, to thank Chukwa Biyama and, of course, to pray for the souls of those who have come before us and uh, to commend and commit Onyendu into the hand of heaven. So those of you who have those color notes now, if you have not done it already, you wait until 12 midday. And that is when you shall break your color and do your prayer. And of course, our ancestors will hear in heaven will listen. Thank you for listening and may Chukwabiyama bless all of you. And for me, I want to say to you from here, good morning.